In this video, I'm going to be doing some pruning and wiring of my big Chinese elm bonsai. And I would like your opinion on one particular branch, which is a little bit awkward. So I'd like your advice on which way to go with it. Cool. Have a look down there. <laughs> Oh, there could be anything in there. What's happening bonsai friends? It's Darren here and I finally found some time to do a bit of pruning and wiring as part of the first styling of my big Chinese elm bonsai. Let's go get it. How's it going everybody? I've changed my shirt because I think everyone's seen enough of my dad bod for one day. I repotted this elm back in the spring and as you can see, whoa, blackbird. As you can see, it's grown like crazy and I've let it run so that it rebuilds that root system. The first thing you need to do is prune back a lot of this growth which has erupted from the shoulders and various places on the trunk that we just don't need because there are more mature pieces, thicker branches in that place already that are more useful to us at this time. So anything that's not necessary, I'm gonna clip off nice and close. I'm outside today because it is super warm in the UK. It might be that I can use this, which is much more flexible than this, which is thicker, but in a bit of an awkward position. And we can wire this out in the best place. We'll make that choice a bit later. Same here. Just trim these wispy bits at the base, at the shoulder. I'm leaving any pieces that might be useful later. Okay, so I've taken the unwanted branches away. Now I'm going to come in and just clean up those rough shear cuts. Ah, oh, that was good. We just got back from a meal to celebrate my eldest daughter's ninth birthday, which is on the 1st of July. I had a huge burger and I ate too much, too much ice cream. Ah. Right, where did we get to? Ah, uh, yes. So we're cleaning up this stump. Okay, so I need to cut this stump back so it's nice and flush and it can begin healing. So I'll have to just nibble it away with the knob cutters, I think. All right, let's crack on. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not trying to do this all in one bite. I'm just going to munch it down bit by bit until we get where we want to be. There's still a big ugly shoulder here, but at least I've taken that stump back. I'm going to observe how that wound develops over the next couple of years um, as this branch grows and thickens. We'll see what this does. I'd like to know what you think about this branch down here. I'd be interested to know your thoughts, um, so write me a comment down below if you've got any suggestions or ideas. Here's what I'm thinking at the moment though. If this were the front of the tree, and I am open to change on that, but if it was the front of the tree, it's kind of just sort of growing straight up in front of the trunk. It's not in the best position really. I guess the options are to remove it. I could cut it back to this piece in order to train it this way. I could cut it right back to this piece here in order to get some movement into it and pull it in this direction. Or I could leave it as is with its straightness that kind of echoes the rest of the tree and then wire some movement into this piece to give us that angular nature that the rest of the trunk has. So let me know down below what you think about it, what would you do, any other ideas that I've missed. Your input is always hugely appreciated so please do just let me know. Give me a, give me a shout what you think. So I think I'm going to leave this one a bit longer. Having said that, the growth that's emerged from these branches lower down has been much more vigorous than the growth that I've seen up in the apex. Um, so I am going to cut it back a bit in the hope that the apex perks up a bit and springs into life. Which seems kind of backwards when you're talking about a typically apically dominant tree, but I think it might be something to do with a lot of the dieback that's been occurring before the tree came into my possession. So anyway, let's just uh, 
remove some of these pieces on the inside because I'm not going to use any of those. Got three coming from this point. What I'm going to do then, I'm going to retain this piece and remove everything else that's at the same level or that's higher up. And I think I'll keep these lower down pieces as well in case they come in useful. Okay, we'll just pop that filler off. I can munch this piece away. Clean that up a little. It's going to heal much nicer with a nice clean cut. Must get around to getting a better tool for this. Every time I remember is when I'm already using it. Okay, so I am going to cut these lower branches back a tad. So I'll take this one back to there. For the time being at least, this one can go back to there. Yeah, so maybe now you can see a little bit better what's going on with this branch at the front, or the current front. Just don't forget, shoot me a comment down below what you would do with it, or any suggestions. Really would appreciate it. Also at some stage I'm gonna do some more work to this carving. It's really rough at the moment, and I'll be honest, carving, not exactly my uh, strong suit. I'm still learning, still developing my skills. So I didn't want to take it too far because once I've carved, once I've removed the material, I can't put it back on. But I had to do something because that sheer face of dead material was bothering me every single time I looked at the tree. And then with this bit, though it's horrible, I was just mucking around with full intention to come in and just completely hollow that section out, I think. But I'll do that at a future date. I'm not going to do that now. Next up then, the apex. Now I do know in the apex what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the top off because it just goes on and on and on. It doesn't have any particularly endearing traits. There's no really interesting movement about it. I think it's probably a bit tall for the tree anyway. So I'll cut back to this and this can be developed as the tree's apex. And I'm just going to put a dab of petroleum jelly on these cuts just to prevent any excessive drying in that area before the tree has time to begin the healing process itself. So I'm guessing that was a bit of a Marmite decision. Is that a British thing? Marmite's a spread that we have in the UK and people tend to either love it or hate it. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, so I'm guessing that's a decision that people are either going to agree with or strongly disagree with. So my reasoning is the apex just continued up. It didn't have any particularly interesting movement to it. There was no particular value to it. It was neither here nor there. It didn't have any interesting features at all. It just existed on the top of the tree. And I think it was just a bit too tall. Well, we, by cutting back to this section of growth here, we can introduce a bit of angular movement to continue the theme that we've got throughout the rest of the trunk. And also it pushes the asymmetry a bit further that way, if that's the direction I choose to go. But we do have the option of experimenting with that. What we are left with though, is this group of three coming from the area. There's a horizontal piece in a more vertical position. And we've got that thick, strong piece in between the two at 45 degrees. I don't really think that the horizontal branch has a place, so I am going to, so I am going to just remove that one for the time being. Okay, so with just the two there forming that fork, I think that works quite nicely. So for the time being at least, we'll go with that. So for this piece, I'm just gonna cut this one back to some finer secondary branching and grow from there. So now this tree is looking a little bit threadbare, but hopefully I think this is gonna bounce back nicely and start to fill in in the coming weeks. Cool. Have a look down there. <laughs> oh, there could be anything in there. There was a family of wood lice and a slug living in there, but they've scarpered now for some reason. 
So while I'm waiting for your input on what to do with this branch, I am going to cut it back. So that's all the pruning done. Let's put these away. I think next I'm going to put some wire on and lay out some of this growth and then wait for your feedback on what to do next. You need to remember to get some more wire. Gotta be careful with this wire now, not to dislodge too much of that beautiful, beautiful bark that we've got. Let's get it locked in. Ever so gently. So that's definitely not the prettiest piece of wire I've ever put onto a branch. Right, here it is then. I'll be honest, I think this is an ugly tree. An unashamedly ugly tree at that. So I think the path to restoring this tree back to its former glory is going to be a long and time-consuming one. I don't think this tree is ever going to be a really beautiful bonsai. I think this piece is going to be an ugly one. It's ugly now. It's still going to be ugly in 10 years time, but hopefully over the next several years I can keep incrementally improving the quality of this tree so that it becomes the best ugly Chinese elm that it could possibly be. I think that's all I can hope for really. I'll quickly pop some fertiliser on. Four, five, and six. So what I want to know from you folks is what on earth am I going to do with this branch? Do I keep it longer? Do I train it this way using this bit of growth? Do I keep it shorter and lower in this direction? Or do I just whack it off completely? Yeah, so in the future I'm going to clean up some of the carving, improve some of that, um, and I'll obviously take on board your comments and I'll put those into practice. Let me know what you think. Be kind, I know it's ugly. We'll get there. We will get there. <laughs> All right, that's it from me then. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll speak to you soon. Take care.